are down a farm track in the Shetland Islands and we are completely stuck in the mud. Tom's gone off to find a farmer with a tractor to pull us out. I'm staying with the van. The sun's setting. It's gale force wind. I hope we get out of this before it gets dark. Sail, my Viking, sail! <laughs> we are miles out in the North Sea, braving the wind and weather. There are no trees to give you respite from the fearsome winds. Jeez. We have driven to the end of the road. This is literally where the road stops and the ocean begins. The next thing that way is the North Pole over the ocean. This is the northernmost road on the northern tip of Shetland. And it's been quite the journey to get here. There's something about getting on a ferry. It feels like you're off on an adventure. This ferry in particular is known for being a bit rough in winter. So Isabel was a little bit nervous. Yeah, I've checked and the sea state is very rough. So It'll be all right. We will, we will, it will be, I am nervous. So I've just read, weather warning, it's likely to be a rough crossing with considerable movement in the vessel with sea conditions. Passengers are strongly advised to exercise caution when moving around. Passengers should make their own decision whether or not to travel based on the information provided. Oh, I'm so nervous. Next stop, Shetland. Everyone on the ferry port's been so nice. We just met Willie, who's sh shown us on, and he's actually one of, uh, he watches our videos, so that was really nice. I'm feeling excited, but I'm quite nervous. I just, I really hate like seeing other people be sick and being sick myself, so I'm, I, it's like my high, high fear right now, but I'm fine. Just deep breaths, do some mindful meditation. <laughs> <laughs> Aberdeen looks lovely, it's such a like a, it is the granite city, it's grey and austere but very beautiful. This is our last bit of light before we see the Shetland Islands as well. Get there at 7.30 in the morning, Apparently, all goes well. Apparently the weather's going to be alright sea wise until we reach Orkney and then it gets rough so. Yeah, our mate Willie on deck told us that so yeah. we're, we're we're trusting you, Willie. So on this ferry, you can either book a cabin, which is the most expensive one, or a reclining seat, the cheapest, or in the middle, a pod, which was 18 pounds each. We're in lounge two, come with us. So you know what concerns me? Because the sheer amount of sick bags they give you. Um, then we've got this little like table that folds out. Yeah, a little Northlink ferries, eye mask, earplugs, and a blanket. And then this button here puts you <laughs> what do you do? I don't think mine works. Back. Woo Whoa, this is full full recline mode. This is where I'm gonna be. <laughs> <Being sick. laughs> and we've got we've got our own little bathroom and with our pod we've got a shower token, which is the most exciting part. This is us. Oh cool. So just put your shower token in there and you get a full full on shower, that's great. Goodbye Aberdeen! Wave it off into the distance into the sunset and we are going north baby! Well I feel much better now we've set sail. It's looking really calm actually and it's so beautiful watching Aberdeen just go off into the sunset. It's lovely. Yeah. I love going off an adventure. A ferry just like marks an adventure. It's like yeah. it has begun. You've started your adventure. I love it. This journey is 12 hours or 13 hours. So we, we left Aberdeen at 5 p.m. We get into Lerwick at 7.30 in the morning. So I went shopping earlier. I know, I haven't told Tom yet. <laughs> Look what I got. New fluffy outfit. Oh my God, that's horrendous. Fluffy trousers. <laughs> fluffy trousers. Oh. <laughs> to replace my green set. Why am I fucking too brown? <laughs> Feel it, so soft. So nice, I can't wait. I'm going to put it on now. <sighs> that was incredible having a shower. Didn't expect that. I only saw last minute before we boarded the ferry that we were actually able to have a shower included with our pod booking. Fantastic, because it's been a while since we've had a shower. It was really hot, but almost too hot, like burning hot. I got my new PJs on. Tom's doing a bit of editing. My glass of wine. This is going to be a nice trip. Everyone's sleeping in here. It's nearly nine o'clock. It hasn't been very rough.
have yet. But I have taken a seasickness tablet just in case. I'm gonna catch some sleep now. I've got my sleeping bag, it's nice and warm in here. Night night. Well, 13 hours later and we have arrived. We've, we're just docking off at the Shetland Islands. Can't believe it. It was quite a bumpy ride, <laughs> but made it in one piece. We had an hour where it was pretty rough near the Fair Isles, but that was like, like two in the morning. So I was fast asleep and it did get into my dreams. I was having some pretty wild uh, Life of Pi style stormy dreams. We are heading to the most northerly point of the UK. Unst. We have to get another two ferries to get there. The wind is actually making the van rock. <laughs> it's going to be interesting sleeping out here, but you know what? I'm just grateful that we made it okay on the ferry crossing. We're gonna do anything outside, it's actually mad. <laughs> so remote. Wowie, the Shetland Islands are pretty wild. We heard that it's gonna it can be quite windy in the winter and stormy. It, it really is. Blowing a hooli. Our third ferry of the day. Uh, it feels like being back in Norway. We've driven up here and we feel completely alone. We decided we want to make the most of the winter and so we thought the only thing that we head up as far north as we could in order to experience the full range of weathers. And believe me, it's windy, it's wet and it's wild. It feels like we've got the whole islands to ourselves. Yeah. And there's this raw wild beauty here. It's incredible. The ferry was really full. <laughs> Everyone must have driven the other way because we haven't seen a single other car. I don't know if we like, they know something that we don't know. <laughs> you can totally see how in the summertime these islands would look tropical. The watercolour is turquoise, it's so clear. The sand is golden. It's really sinking in now where we are and how lucky we are to be here. Like, like right now there's about 10 seals looking at me and it feels like We've just got this place to ourselves. It's so remote. I do wonder what we've let ourselves in for. We have yellow wind warnings coming in the next few days. <laughs> and we're not even here yet. That rock over there in the middle of the ocean is the most northern point in the whole of the United Kingdom. And if you go this way, you don't hit anything until the North Pole. That ocean, she's stirring away. She's a bit angry today. There's a swell out there, and it ain't afraid to come to us. Get in my drop for transit van and I'll take you to some tourist attractions. We've driven a short way south to this reconstructed longhouse. They've built this replica of one of the longhouses after excavating three longhouse sites here on Unst. They've, they've kind of combined their findings from those excavations to show what it might have looked like. Some of them would have housed the most powerful Vikings and their men. Here on Unst is the highest density of Viking settlements anywhere in the world, and that's including Scandinavia. You can really see the influence that Nordic culture has had on this area. Even their flag is a hybrid of the Scottish flag and the Nordic cross that you see on the Scandinavian flags. The reason for there being such a high density of Viking settlements here is that this actually has a crossroads between Norway and the places that the Vikings would head to. So whether that's Iceland, Greenland, off to America, or even to raid in the UK and Ireland, this would be a perfect stop off point. As well as this long house, they also have a replica long ship. This replica, they built it in Sweden and they wanted it to set sail all the way to America from Sweden, but it set sail in the year 2000 and it didn't make it any further than the Shetland Islands. So now she's got a lovely home in us. Oh, oh! Sail, my Viking, sail! Faster, faster, boy. 
Shetland's connection with the Nordic countries uh, gives you an idea of just how far we are from the rest of the UK. We're closer to Bergen in Norway than we are to Edinburgh and as for London, we're closer to the Arctic Circle than we are to London. Let's go! It's pretty cool to think that this replica is seaworthy and it actually did sail over here from Sweden. If I'm honest, it's hard to get out of the van because it is wild out there, so windy, so cold. But once you're out, you're glad you bit the bullet and did it because it's good to get the wind in your hair. Apparently in Shetland they say, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes. And we just had blue skies and now it's like a hailstorm. It's very sweet in here, it's like a little uh, village shop with a cafe. Very happy to seek refuge in here for a bit. We've decided to wait out the worst of stormy weather and we've ordered some jack of potatoes. Guys, this is really stressful. We've come down this farm track to come see the castle to find a place to sleep for the night. And we, our Google Maps have sent us down this little farm track and we're completely stuck in the mud and we can't get out and we just keep revving and it's so stressful. Uh, so we're either gonna have to be pulled out by a tractor or just keep trying. But the more we try, the worse it gets. So Tom's now building me like a little ramp behind the wheel with some bits of wood he can find. And then he's gonna push and I'm gonna rev. <laughs> I think he was shouting no at me, but I couldn't hear him, so I carried on revving off all so bad. He's literally splattered in mud, and we just had showers. I'm so sorry, Tom. I don't. <laughs> Let me try. It's so annoying. You just keep coming. You. I can hear you. I can hear you. <laughs> We are officially stuck. We're really badly oh, stuck. Oh, this is so stupid. Oh. We're those idiot tourists yeah. who follow a pin down the road. We actually are. It's so embarrassing. I knew it was the wrong road. I just thought, oh, maybe someone could turn around. I wish we just reverse back. We can't go back in time now. I guess I'm walking out. We're we'll come with you. Here. No, we've got to leave someone here with the van, I think. Thank God we can speak the language. So do you want me, do you want me to go instead? I don't no, mind. No, it's alright. Alright, okay. so you can take my phone? Yeah, that's alright. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll leave you the keys. In a bit. Good luck. How long are you gonna be? Uh, it's a 17 minute walk guys. so. Okay. Guys, this is so bad. I'm just smiling because it's like a stupid situation. What are we like? Stuck down a lane in Shetland. I literally was reading a blog this morning about someone else that got stuck and had to be pulled by a tractor. And I was like, oh, silly fiddies. And there we are, this is us. It's so windy out there. It feels like the van might topple over. We are super stuck. Like all the wheels are stuck. The stupid thing is, we looked at this lane and we we said this doesn't feel right. It feels like a farmer's track. Shetland Islands, man. 
You are wild. I really hope Tom finds someone with a tractor. He's just gonna have to go knock on people's doors. This is ridiculous. Tom's been gone about 15 minutes and I've just seen another car is reversing down this track. I think they might be coming to save us. Thank you, whoever you are. Seriously, yeah, please, you saved us. Please have it. It's not full, but and then Tony, thank you, honestly. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Oh, I'll slip it. No. I'll take this. Okay, it's not even full, though, please. I'll take that. <laughs> You've been so it's amazing. Not, that, thank you. Fine. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> it's fine. It's very good. What did you do? Just knock on people's houses? It's just the first one. I, I've knocked on a house, and the the how the farmyard wasn't connected to the house, so. Uh, I just went into the farmyard, yeah. and there, in his shed, he's actually got the the boat that they're going to burn uh, for oh, here, for cool. this island. He's looking after it. What a ledge! Like seriously, oh. my hands are numb. Just I'm so like... pleased about that. But like, I was really worried because he was going back pretty fast, and yeah. we're like skidding around. And I was worried that we were going to come out and then rear-end him. Tommy, it looked absolutely insane. You were literally like. <laughs> Gliding across yeah, the grass. Yeah, going sideways. It was so weird. I was just like, I didn't know what to do because I'm like going, I'm steering that way and then like just traveling this way. He was just like, didn't think of anything of it. He thought it was fine. Yeah. And you are covered in mud. And it was all over your face too. Yeah. It's not anymore. Jeez. Oh, that was stressful. Ridiculous. It was so embarrassing. He didn't mind though, he was yeah, I know, but it's just like we're those tourists who no. drive down the farm lane. <clears throat> oh, oh well. What a day this has been. I'm kind of kicking myself when we drove down that road. I'm like a bit annoyed at myself for doing that. And we felt like it was the wrong way and we like knew it was, but I was like, maybe there's somewhere to turn around. And we just had one wheel go off the road and then that was game over. It just sunk straight in. Brian is an absolute legend. Again. Towed us out Again. and we gave him a bottle of our Jura whiskey and he refused to take a 20 pound note. But honestly, I would have paid like so much because he saved he saved us. Otherwise, we'd still be there now. So yeah, feeling grateful for Brian. I think I was just really paranoid about getting pulled out and then like going into the back of him. But I like panicked and I put the brakes on and then because the wheels weren't spinning, we were skidding outwards and uh, flailing out. So what I should have done is just taken the brakes off, um, just be ready to brake once we were onto the road. But uh, it was just, all happened a bit quick and panicked a bit. Um, but I'm just so glad we're out in the mud. Oh, long day. Right, that's us for tonight. 
The wind has not stopped the whole time we've been here on Shetland. It has been so windy. Every night the whole van is rocking and today seems to be the same as every other day. The weather here is just very harsh and there is no shelter, there's no trees. We're here at arguably one of the most beautiful spots on the Shetland Islands, St Ninian's Isle. You can actually normally walk across the beach to the island and there's really nice walks all around the chapel but when it's really stormy the waves actually cover this tombola, this sandbank and you can't cross and today is very stormy. It's becoming a running theme in the Shetland Islands. It's extremely windy every single day. <laughs> plastic on this beach so we've decided to do a little beach clean. I've got a couple of bin bags and we're just going to pick up all the plastic we can find. There's some bins in the car park so we can just leave it there and uh, it's just a shame to see plastic on a place like this. So. We managed to fill up a bag with rubbish so we're going to take this up to the bin. It looks like we're not the only ones who are doing a beach clean. This whole bin is filled with uh, sea litter. If you missed our last episode, we spoke about how our sliding door, the lock, needs replacing. We had problems with it not opening, and then Tom sort of twiddled with it, fixed it, but it meant that actually we can't lock it. So now we can't lock our van. It's quite bad, but we're on probably the most safest place in the UK to be not locking your van. We are going to get it sorted when we get back to mainland. Hopefully we get it sorted before this video comes out or else there'll be some cheeky thieves out there. <laughs> I imagine in summer it would turn into like this tropical paradise for the one or two days of sun. I imagine there's nowhere nicer. We're now in the far southern tip of Shetland and we're going to a place called Jarlhof. And to, in order to get there, we have to drive across the runway of the airport here. So yeah, if you haven't got your sea legs, you can actually fly to the Shetland Islands. Um, but I recommend getting the ferry. It's a nice experience and it's also cool having your car here. Burrito ferry! As you might be able to hear from a helicopter behind me, we are very close to that airport that we just drove over the runway and we've come to a place called Jarlhof. <laughs> Have I got burrito around my mouth? Uh, yes, yeah. One of the most important archaeological sites in the whole of the UK. It's apparently thought to have had people living and working here for over 4,000 years. So it's very unique to have so much going on in, in one small village. It's just cool to think that like, some of these little shells that we're looking at here would have been eaten by someone 4,000 years ago. Not many sites in the UK actually show this many changes over time and it can actually be quite difficult for archaeologists to understand because people have been leaving the village, ab abandoning it, then rebuilding homes for thousands and thousands of years. But it really does make it such a special and unique place. We've now jumped forward slightly into the Bronze Age. It's fascinating seeing like this is just still remains and it's from 800 BC. So yeah, we would have had someone working in hot conditions in here, pouring molten bronze into your moulds to make these tools. For bronze working, you need tin, and the nearest tin deposits are all the way back in Cornwall. So they would have been trading uh, for the tin. Wow, crazy to think about. We're here in the Iron Age settlements now. It's really interesting going around this site. There's so many different layers of history all piled on top of each other. Yeah, it's a really cool site, and it's especially cool um, because you can really interact with the ruins. You're allowed to explore. You can get right inside the buildings here. I'm in a rock, which is like a uniquely Scottish building. They give you a little audio guide so that when you're going around the site, you can get a little uh, tour guide, which is really good. I'm normally one of those people that when I'm walking around a museum, I, I can't take in information, I'm quite bored, but this is done in a really engaging way and, I, and I'm, I'm interested. We've seen two wheelhouses on this tour so far. And this one is so well preserved. It really gives you an idea of what it would have been like to live here. 
all this time ago. We've gone now to the Norse settlements. Bergen is just 48 hours sail away from Jarlsberg. So in a time when traveling by sea was much more common, it wouldn't have been any problem for those Scandinavian Vikings. They would have just nipped back, got some wood. We are up on top of a viewing platform on top of a Laird's house, which is the most recent of the archeology span here. And it dates from about 1500s. But from up here, you get a view of the rest of the site and it's a really cool place so many different layers of history all on top of each other and the audio tour is really good it's really descriptive i like how they kind of they describe what it would be like living there at the time they describe like the house and the family living there what you could picture like the having that fire in the center and children playing oh my god tony robinson <laughs> tony robinson tom thinks i'm a nerd because i i'm i've been talking a lot about the history of this place but which you won't know because it won't have made it into the video. <laughs> yeah, you won't have made, made it in the video. But I I honestly don't normally have a huge interest in history. But that was really good. That was really interesting. I think just the fact that there was so much history in one tiny little area. We've been heading back up north, up through the islands, and we've veered off to the west and we've gone over like lots of little bridges island hopping our way over here and we've stopped here at meal beach and this beach is just like the whitest sand with this turquoise water it's really beautiful here guys i know what you're thinking why are you not going for a swim we're on the shetland islands and there's turquoise water and white sand well i'm just too cold i just can't face it today sorry sorry to disappoint this sand is so white you could on a sunny day, you could definitely believe this is in the Caribbean somewhere. The islands and the rocks here, the geology is so like violent. It's all these jagged, sharp rocks just jutting out of the ocean. Feels like a very hostile place. Like you can imagine this is where Vikings live. <laughs> She's saying something boring about rocks again. <laughs> yeah. We have come further north to a place called Bray. And this is home to the most normally fish and chip shop in Britain. Yum, yum, it smells amazing. We've driven just a short way uh, to find some picturesque to eat our chips. And look at this place. So this is actually North Mavine, which is almost an island, except for this sea here is the Atlantic Ocean. And this sea over here is the North Sea. So there's this strip of land about 10 meters long and it is the only thing connecting the whole of North Mavine. It's getting cold, it's getting dark, the chips are all gone. It's time to find somewhere to park up. We're gonna head on to North Mavine and hopefully find a nice park up. It's raining outside. We've got the sound of a tinkling rain. Having a cozy night in the van. Watch a movie together. Today we have come into Shetland's capital, Lerwick, and that is because today is Uphelia, which is Shetland's Viking burning ship festival. We are parked up just outside of town and we are parked up next to James and Ellie, who we met on the ferry over here. And they've actually got us a program. We have wandered into town and here on the harbour side is a big Viking longship. And this is the boat that they were gonna burn tonight. This festival is much awaited because they haven't had a festival here for two years due to COVID. So hopefully it's gonna be an extra big celebration tonight. Everyone's gonna to be so excited to have it back on. And I just cannot believe the amount of hours and love that's gone into this boat and then it's just, it's just going to be burned down. I got bought that set as a kid. <laughs> We were just wandering down the main high street and a band of Vikings just wandered past. <laughs> the young Vikings of Shetland aren't gonna let some hail disrupt them. God, the weather's grim, but they're out here shouting and yelling. It's good vibes. They have like a little hailstorm mid-procession. Lerwick Brewery has yeah. a pop-up uh, They've got a special Uphelia beer. 
It's really delicious, actually. Getting through it. We came in here and we realised it was 11.30 and we said we'll come back at 12 o'clock. And at 10 to 12, we caved and we had to have a beer. We met some lovely people and we couldn't resist, so why not? Oh my God. Peter, Emily, Jess, Chris. <laughs> We have six hours before the procession starts. <laughs> oh. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> she can't wear one, her head's too big. <laughs> Why is my head so big? So we have six hours before the procession starts and we're already drinking beers. It's dangerous territory, but we are in Shetland and we've been told but it would be rude not to start drinking before 12, so <laughs> here we go. <laughs> We've been speaking to Chris and he has got tickets to one of the halls and the burning of the ship here tonight is just the like tip of the iceberg of the celebrations. There's 47 squads and these, all these squads have a party piece. All these different squads are going to perform at different venues around the island, which they call halls. They perform until 8 in the morning. It's a 12-hour festival. Uh, but the burning of the boat is just a start. Unfortunately, we don't have tickets to the hall. Even if you just end up in a pub tonight, it's going to be great. Like the town hall, the town halls are like you know, 12 hours, people going nuts. You've got these like what 47 different bands with these crazy, crazy names who are just going to go nuts. One guy told me earlier on that by the time he gets to our town hall, I expect him to be shirtless. Come here, show us what you got. Got ourselves. How nice. Man's beige shirt for Tom. You can wear that one tonight, aren't you, Tom? I might. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad to find out. And then I've got myself a 13 year old's top. Israel's made me change into the shirt she got me from a charity <laughs> shop earlier. I've got my new jumper on from the charity shop. Um, oh, yeah, we had, we've already had such a good day. We've made some really nice friends. Well, now we're just going to try and discover if there's like a cozy pub we can go to. I mean, there yeah, is that I... pub close to here that we haven't Why tried yet. <laughs> Again, this has not been advertised. It just feels like you wander around Lerwick on Uphelian, the party finds you. Uh, we've just been in this bar and the whole Yarl Squad band has just come in. We've been listening to this music all night and uh, the procession is about to start in about 10 minutes so we got to leave. torches have been lit and you can feel the heat coming off it there's just thousands of torches lining the street there's all the different squads there's people dressed as all sorts it's quite surreal
<laughs> this is about 4 a.m. after the Up Hellier celebrations. Um, we are in our van, but it is so stormy. I don't think the camera's gonna be able to show it, but it's the windiest I've ever experienced in the van. It's rocking it, like we're on a ship, like we're on a rough sea. <laughs> you could feel seasick in this van. It feels like we're about to take off or topple over. It's making us laugh that we're in the most northerly point we could have come <laughs> on this road trip. But yeah, what an experience. I've got this good feeling and we're at a spot that's really good for looking out for poor boys. Poor boys, <laughs> how'd you say it? <laughs> Dolphins, how'd you say it? Porpoises, dolphins, and whales. Oh, come on, boys, come back there. Also, guys, we got recognised in our pod by a couple. We've been recognised twice on the boat. Wow. Maybe famous. we'll make friends with them in Shetland Islands. Hi, guys, I'm the head of the ship here, and I am saying today that my man on ship needs to get rowing. He's not pulling his weight. <laughs> Don't drag me into your weird place. <laughs> Too sweet. 